In today's video, we are going to talk about how we can add vertical garden color. Hi, I'm Heidi from Garden Crossings, and the plants we're going to specifically look at today are the clematis vines. So clematis vines are beautiful plants that add nice color to the garden. Um, often they're called the queen of the vines. So before we dig into specific varieties, I want to give you a few helpful tips and hints on how to grow clematis because I feel like a lot of people can kind of be scared by clematis. That's what I hear is, oh, I don't want to grow them. They're too finicky. They're really not. So let's go ahead and take a look at um, the different prune groups. I think that's the biggest thing that kind of trip people up. So let's first take a look at the prune groups and then when planting them, what needs to be done when planting them. So clematis varieties are classified into three different groups according to when they bloom. So there's prune group one, which are the spring bloomers. There's prune group two, which are the repeat bloomers. And then there's prune group three, which are the summer or fall bloomers. Prune group one, the spring bloomers, they like to be pruned after flowering if it's needed. If they don't need to be trimmed, you don't need to do it. Prune group two, those are varieties that usually bloom early on in the, the summer or later on in the season. So what I do with my prune group two clematis is I wait until spring when I start to see some new growth coming off that vine. So once I see that new growth coming, I look and I'm like, okay, nothing above this point is getting anything new. I'll trim out all that dead growth. So then we'll have our first round of blooms that will come off of that growth that is coming on last year's stems. And then our later on in the summer flowers will come from any new growth or any new vining that happens. So you'll get your early color from last year's wood and you'll get your later in the summer color from your new season's growth or wood. And then there's prune group three. Those are your summer or fall bloomers. Those can be usually pruned back to about 18 inches or so in late summer. Another thing with clematis is they like to have their roots shaded. So what we recommend if you wanna shade, which you want to do with shading your roots is you can put down a light layer of mulch or you can underplant the clematis vine. And what that means is just plant around it and then the plants that you're planting around it are gonna go ahead and provide shade for the roots of those clematis plants. When you're planting, we recommend planting so that the top of your soil in your pot is also the top of the soil in your garden. The first plant we're gonna talk about is the bourbon clematis. One thing I will point out is when you are looking at clematis pictures online, you might see one plant, but it comes in various different colors. It is, a, the, or the flower is various different colors. So usually, in our experience and what I try to do on our website is I will take a picture of bourbon an example every time it's blooming in the greenhouse. Clematis color of the flower does vary based off of environment. So if it's grown in a more sunny location or a more shady location that can affect the flower color. If it's grown um, in a humid or not as humid area that can affect the flower color as well as if it's early season blooms or late season blooms, that too can affect the flower color. So for example, bourbon clematis here in the picture looks like a beautiful vibrant magenta bloom. Depending on the conditions it's grown in, you may see this flower be a little bit lighter or a little bit darker in color. So just know that clematis flower colors may vary based off of their environment. Bourbon clematis is hardy in zones four to nine, and it gets about four to six foot tall. So a fairly compact clematis variety. It blooms early summer, and then a light rebloom later on in the season. The reason why I like the bourbon clematis is I love that beautiful bright magenta color. And then if you look at it, there's just a really light soft halo on each of the petals. Next is Crystal Fountain, and this is just such a dreamy looking clematis, I think. It's an early season bloomer. Usually it's May, end of May, maybe beginning of June when it's blooming here in my Zone 6 Michigan garden. Crystal Fountain is hardy in Zones 4 to 9, and it gets 4 to 6 foot tall. So again, another fairly compact clematis variety. It's part of Prune Group 2. 
So with clematis, they can be grown in the ground or in containers. The only recommendation is, is if you are planting them in containers, um, and let's say you are a zone six, make sure that your clematis vine is hardy down to at least zone four. If you're a zone eight, make sure your clematis vine is at least hardy down to a zone six. So make sure your plant is two zones hardier than your growing zone. The next plant is the Florida Ciboldii clematis. This is a really unique looking clematis. We actually haven't been able to get this one for about five years now. So when we saw this one was available again, we were super excited to get it back on our listing. This was a very popular plant back when we had it. Uh, so we anticipate this is gonna be another one. Uh, th this will be another popular one this year, especially now that we've been able to bring it back after all the years of not having it. Florida Ciboldii is hardy in zone six to nine. So this is going to be a little bit more tender than what some of the clematis varieties we carry are. So make sure you're watching the hardiness zone because they do vary a little bit um, from like zone four to zone six. Uh, so this one is gonna be a little bit more tender. It gets six to 10 foot tall. Uh, and we do recommend planting it in more of a shelter type area just due to the delicate petals on it. It's got beautiful white petals and then in the center, the purple and white kind of frilly center. Uh, it's not a big flower. It's probably only maybe a three inch flower or so, um, but really beautiful when it does bloom. Next on the list is the pink mink clematis. This is one from Proven Winners. Pink mink clematis is, I, I love it. Um, Again, not your typical clematis flower form. It's a little smaller, maybe two inches or so. Um, it has usually four petals on it, so it's not like a big full circular clematis flower. But even though it's smaller, there is a ton of flowers that this plant produces. So small in size for the flower, but plentiful to make up for that smaller flower size. Pink mink is hardy in zones four to nine, and it gets about nine to 10 foot tall. So I have this growing on a about a four or five foot obelisk. So it grows up and then it kind of canopies over because I'm not giving it the full height that the plant could grow on, um, which I think that's fine. I mean, if you can give it 10 foot, great. But if your space is smaller, it'll grow up and it'll just canopy over for almost kind of a fuller plant look. Pink mink is part of gro uh, prune group three. It does bloom midsummer. So this is one that you would prune back to about 18 inches or so um, late summer or in the fall. Next is the Rebecca clematis. And this is probably one of the most vibrant red clematises that we carry. It's hardy in zones four to nine. It gets about six to eight foot tall and it blooms early summer and then again later on in the season. So part of prune group two. This one is one too, specifically talking about how flower colors can vary. Um, Rebecca, like I said, it's the most vibrant scarlet red bloom I've ever seen, but I have also seen this one with pink shades. So just be aware that again, depending on the environment that it's grown in, you may see variations of red to pink. Next on the list is the Clematis Rigucci, and this is our top selling Clematis. Rigucci is not your typical looking Clematis because it's a bell shaped Clematis. It's not that big circular flower form that many of us are used to when we talk about clematis flowers. Raguchi is one of the longest blooming clematis in my garden. Uh, usually it's blooming for upwards of, boy, at least two months or so. It's also the clematis that the hummingbirds love the most. Anything with that bell-shaped flower that they can get up and in, um, and the bees, the bees love it as well. Uh, so yeah, we see a lot of hummingbird activity on this clematis um, Raguchi. Uh, prune group three, so bloom it late, bloom it, trim it late summer, uh, late summer or fall, whenever works best for you. But yeah, if you're looking for a clematis that's long blooming, this definitely is going to be probably the longest blooming clematis that we have. Next on the list is the Sweet Summer Love clematis, and this is another proven winner introduction. Sweet Summer Love is hardy in zones four to nine, and it gets about 10 to 15 foot tall. So a very large, tall clematis vine. The unique thing with Sweet Summer Love is it's got a nice vanilla scent to it. So 
The fragrance is absolutely breathtaking. Another unique thing with Sweet Summer Love is again, it's not your typical flower form for clematis. It's gonna be a smaller flower, maybe the size of a quarter, maybe a little bit bigger than a quarter. But again, the size of the flower is made up by the, the sheer mass of flowers that this plant produces in a summer. Another unique thing is with the flowers on Sweet Summer Love, the buds are red and then as they open and as the flower ages, it turns to a deep purple. So at any given point in time on your Sweet Summer Love clematis, you're going to notice that there's various shades of purple to magenta to red, which is really unique because I think that makes each of those flowers individually just really pop and stand out. Next on the list is Viva Polonia which is one of my favorite proven winter introductions. Ever since this one was introduced, I just, I really, I've really had an eye for this one. I just think it's beautiful. I think it's the bright magenta blooms and then it's got that beautiful white star center on it. So there's just something about that white and that magenta that contrasts each other and just, it really pops in the garden. Harding zones five to nine. This is a fairly compact clematis reaching four to six foot tall. I have it on probably a four or five foot obelisque and it's the perfect size for that plant. It blooms early summer and then it will repeat bloom again later on in the season. I'm trying to do a good job of showing you all the various different colors of clematis. There's reds and purples and blues and stripes and all the different flower forms and such. Um, so here we have probably one of the most basic of colors, but also one of the most versatile color colors that can go in the garden. This here is the clematis candida, and this is probably our most popular white um, along with Henrii. That's another popular one. Uh, candida has a really large flower. It's hardy in zones four to nine, and it gets eight to 12 foot tall. So a pretty tall clematis vine, part of prune group two. So it's the early season and then the late season bloomer. White really, it does, it works with any flower color in the garden. So if you're looking to kind of mix and match colors, which I love to do with my clematis, like let's talk about that actually. So I have many just singular obliques, four-sided, and I'll plant two or three different clematis on those. That way there's always something kind of blooming. But then what I did is I created a huge clematis wall where we took four by fours and put them in the ground. And then we took chicken wire and strung it from four by four to four by four to create about an eight to 10 foot wall that we could grow clematis vines on. So when I'm growing clematis, as I mentioned, I like to mix and match them because if one's not blooming, maybe another one is. So if you plant just all, you know, one, it's gonna have its bloom times. But if you plant several different varieties, they all are going to have their each individual bloom time, which means your wall should virtually be in color at any point in the season. So if I've got an eight to 10 foot wide wall, it has two sides on it, chicken wire wall, it's got two sides on it. I'm planting anywhere from eight to 12, sometimes, yeah, I'd say eight to 12 different varieties of clematis that are all just mingling together and giving me different flower colors at different points in the season. So that's a fun thing to do is think, think two, think three, think multiples when you're planting your clematis so that you always might have something um, blooming. The next one we'll talk about here is a new introduction that we hope to have available probably by late spring to start shipping. We'll, we'll see how it goes, but our fingers are crossed that we'll be having this for late spring shipping. It's called Funiella. I probably said that wrong. Funiella clematis. And it's a new introduction from Proven Winners. It's a beautiful yellow clematis. And again, a totally different look to the flower form. It almost looks like a little octopus. It's just, it's beautiful. When I saw it in the trial gardens last summer, oh, I just, I always tell Proven Winners, you need to add more clematis because I love my clematis vines. So when they introduced this one and it was yellow, which there's not a lot of yellow clematis, I was really excited to see this one in the offerings. So this one is hardy in zones four to nine. It gets six to 10 foot tall, so a fairly tall, aggressive bloomer. 
Uh, this one blooms early summer to midsummer, and it is part of prune group one. So we would recommend if trimming is needed to trim after it's done flowering. There are just so many different clematis varieties available. And fun fact, clematis vines are the first plants that we started shipping online here at Garden Crossings over 25 years ago. We only shipped clematis when we started. So I have grown several varieties of clematis uh, in my lifetime. And wow, there's just so many different varieties and heights and colors and such available. Um, I believe on our website, we have over 60 varieties. So I will be putting some links in the description below. We'll put links to all of the ones we featured in today's video, as well as a link to all of the varieties that we sell here at Garden Crossings. If you're new to our station, Garden Crossings is an online mail order company. We ship plants across the United States. We also have our retail garden center, which is located in Zeeland, Michigan. Um, so we would love to help bring clematis into your garden. If you have any questions or comments on the clematis we talked about today, or just in general, feel free to leave them below. We'll make sure I get to them and help, you know, if you're teeter-tottering on oh, where do I start, which do I, which do I do? Um, I'll give you my recommendations as far as some varieties that are, there are some that are a little easier than others, but in general, just keeping in mind that don't let clematis seem tricky and they shouldn't be tricky. So just try, try one, start with one. And I think you'll be experiencing a whole new different look and feel to your garden by adding that beautiful vertical height and color to the garden. Thanks for watching. I'm Heidi from Garden Crossings.